I would love to see art truly get its appreciation and value it deserves from the community, from, from all individuals. We all take in art on a daily basis, multiple times a day. We're watching Netflix, we're listening to the radio. We are looking for hobbies to busy our free time. All of this is so important and it adds value and it makes you sane and it just creates joy. And that all is essentially enough as a purpose, right? So I just, if the arts could get properly funded and at least was seen equal to a lot of other industries, I think we would see some really beautiful projects arise. So um, until then, I'm constantly working towards um, making that happen and in any small way I can and just being an advocate for the arts and for all my creative um, collaborators. Far in the distance, there's a promise. It seems far in the distance. My name is Jennifer Allison, and I'm the director curator here at the WKP Kennedy Gallery. So essentially, I'm in charge of putting on events and exhibitions for the community to enjoy. And that all revolves around working with 2D and 3D artists from our local community. I am originally from North Bay. I grew up here, was born and raised, and then the past 18 years, I had the opportunity to live all over the world. Once I graduated from high school, I ended up moving to Toronto to study fashion design at Ryerson University. And those were the best four years of my life. It's where I discovered myself as a creative individual and was you know, exposed to so many incredible people and opportunities and events. So I really grew as a creative during those four years. So my first job out of school was with Aldo based in Montreal, and I was hired as a technical illustrator. What that meant was I was sketching all day, and at the time I thought I could still do my apparel in the evenings, but this job ended up becoming more than full-time and allowed me to travel the world for work. Working on the factory floors, working with technicians, and essentially even though I didn't study footwear, my apparel experience translated into that industry very nicely. Eventually, the industry started taking its toll. I was working seven days a week, 15 hour days or more, traveling a lot for work. So. I was looking for a bit of a balance and ended up being inspired and decided to start my own business. But prior to doing that, I decided to take a little bit of time off. So I ended up going to Peru and volunteering. And while in Peru, I ended up creating the business um, in a small cafe with horrible internet. And the business was called Art and Soul. And that's where I taught shoemaking and leather craft workshops for a general audience. So I opened up this industry that was becoming a lost art to the general public. I figured, you know, there's a lot of people who were interested in sewing, so why not shoemaking? And uh, essentially in 2020, I decided that was the time that I wanted to move closer to my family. Unfortunately, after moving, 10, uh, 10 days after moving, COVID was announced. And my business was shut down for two and a half years. And my coping mechanism during this time, I find everybody had a different way to cope what was happening in the world and the lockdowns. Mine ended up being painting and drawing. And painting and drawing has always been a big part of my life, but it's always been the side hustle or just an outlet that when I have time, I get, get around to it or I would make time for but it was never the priority. But during COVID, something happened and it's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to touch my sewing machines. I didn't want to make shoes, work with leather. I just wanted to sit at my desk and paint and draw. So that's what I did for the first time in a very long time. I gave myself permission to work on my own artistic art practice.
My days can range anywhere from being at my desk all day long, programming, coordinating with artists, processing payments, bookkeeping, planning new exhibition ideas, researching all the way to painting and patching the walls and sanding and hanging up all the artwork, understanding what the artist is trying to say with their artwork and their their collection and figure out ways that we can make sure that's crystal clear. So it's all about creating a flow and a common thread to make sure that the patron's eye just travels naturally around the room. Um, so storytelling is a huge part. So I see the gallery as two serving two purposes. Sometimes it's just simply a, an escape. It's really important to have spaces that inspire. And I think that's why it's so important to have this space downtown North Bay, but it's also an educational tool. So I think with the constant um, revolving door of artists that we feature, each artist has something to say. Sometimes it's a little more uplifting. Sometimes it's really dark and deep and important. Whatever the case may be, we try and match our programming and make sure it's relevant with the times and make sure that it will serve our community. When I was younger, I really cared about celebrities wearing my work and I am fortunate to have had, you know, Cameron Diaz, Rihanna, um, Blake Lively, uh, to name a few, wear my, my designs, which is a true honor. But that stuff doesn't matter to me as much anymore. It's more about the process and I wanna make sure I'm really enjoying what I'm doing and really, making sure every project that I take aligns with my values. So that's kind of where my focus is moving forward. Second makes it easier to keep on breathing. At night in my dreams, I feel peace. I remember it all. And all it takes is faith or hate saying goodbye. And I wish time went slow, but I know it ain't too long, too long for us. I wait for you. can break us too, babe I wait for you.